Frenchie's Art Gallery, located on historic Oak Street beside the Maple Leaf Bar. With over 3,000 square feet of space, it features a large gallery front room and Frenchie's personal art studio. Frenchie's Art Gallery is also connected to the Maple Leaf Courtyard, which is ideal for the New Orleans night scene. Frenchie's Art Gallery, 8314 Oak Street. Yeah, you're right. So here's the bottom line. Good evening, and welcome to Primetime Sports. Hey, we have a very special show for you tonight. Hey, with a visit from a guy who, quite frankly, he doesn't do a whole lot of interviews. Pelicans general manager, Del Demps, joins me right here on Primetime Sports for the second time in the last eight months. And joining us on the show as well is his son, Riley, who's a guard on the Newman Greeny basketball team. Looking forward to that. Hey, speaking of hoops, hey, we gave him two months off, but former Final Four coach, well, he's the hoop coach with LSU. John Brady was our college basketball analyst for the uh, college hoop season. Well, I'll tell you what, he's back today after a few months off. He's going to talk about the NBA finals between Golden State and Cleveland. Hey, that's the series by, that the Warriors have a 2-0 lead, as you know, and they've been playing dominating basketball, hey, particularly in the second half of both these games at Oracle Arena in Oakland. Hey, the Warriors... Their many talents have been on full display. And they're, they're, they're doing great. Guys like Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Klay Thompson, of course, Andre Godala. But the best player on the court, without question, during this finals has been from their newest player on the team, former NBA MVP Kevin Durant. Whether it's been his silky smooth jump shot or those explosive moves to the hoop where he finishes with the best of them, Durant has literally been unstoppable in the first two games of this series. However, if they're is uh, a team in the NBA who will not lose confidence. Well, you know that's LeBron and the Cleveland Cavaliers who've been in this very same spot before being down two games in the NBA Finals just last season, as you already know. Hey, the Cavs, they were down 3-1 in that series, and they became the first team to ever win a championship in that situation, so don't give up with them. Hey, switching sports, but speaking of championships, how about the Stanley Cup Finals? They suddenly became very interesting again. The Nashville Predators, who were down 2-0 to the Pittsburgh Penguins, came back to even that series at 2, including last night's 4-1 victory at home. Hey, and back to Pittsburgh now for Game 5, as it's now a best-of-three series. And hopefully the NBA Finals will follow suit on that very same thing, because they're down 2 as well. It can happen, and they can come back and make it a series as well. Hey, the big news locally here, of course, is the LSU Tigers, the baseball Tigers. They've won 14 games in a row. Can you believe that? Including 19 of their last 21. And after ripping through the end of the season and then the SEC tournament, the Tigers, well, they've made quick work this weekend of Texas Southern, Southeastern Louisiana, and Rice. And the biggest story, though, in a, in a series of many of them, has to be freshman pitcher Eric Walker. He continues to pitch like Greg Maddox, Finding his spots, location, not overpowering you with the fastball, but just knowing how to pitch a baseball game. He blanked the Owls 5 to nothing on Sunday in eight innings to put the Tigers into the Super Regional this weekend versus Mississippi State. Hey, the other big story of this it has to be the surgeons of freshman center fielder Zach Watson, who, by the way, had four home runs Friday and Saturday, equaling his total of four home runs all season. So he has been on fire. The freshmen's come through. But speaking of the Mississippi State game, hey, LSU swept them two weekends ago. Remember that? They went up to Starkville to win the SEC West over Mississippi State and also got a share of the entire conference's title. Hey, the Bulldogs, well, they beat a, a powerful Southern Miss team to get to the Super Regional this weekend. The coaching matchup is a bit juicy between Paul Maneri and his former hitting coach, Andy Canizero. It's going to be interesting to say the least because they did not leave on the best of terms. Hey, in other news, the Saints, unfortunately, this news isn't great. It was announced that Nick Fairley, the defensive tackle, had such a good first year with the Saints last year, has some serious heart issues. His NFL jeopardy, future might be in jeopardy. Let's hope and pray 
he recovers for the sake of Nick and his family. Hey, the LSU softball team, I got to get to those girls. They had a great season again, reaching their third straight College World Series. They did beat UCLA in the first game over there in Oklahoma City, but they were eliminated by the Oregon Ducks this week, and congratulations to them. And speaking of Tigers, former LSU baseball stars Alex Bregman and I got to say, relief pitcher Will Harris are huge parts of a Houston Astro team that is ripping up the major leagues with a 42-16 and 16 record. Winners of uh, their last 11 in a row. Remember when they were just awful a few years ago? That's what patience and developing young players can do for you. And back to the Saints for a second. Running back Adrian Peterson is absolutely blowing everybody away at OTAs with his superior athleticism. And I'm not saying it's going to translate to another 1,000-yard season at the age of 32. But the early returns on AP look very promising. I hope so. Hey, by the way, the Saints annual charity softball game is going to be held tomorrow at Tulane's Greer Field at Turchin Stadium. Cornerback Delvin Bro replaces Tim Lolito as this year's Saints host. And last but not least, the French Open. That's right. On the clay courts of Roland Garros Stadium in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower, lefty Rafael Nadal has dominated this event over the years, and he's in the quarterfinals with heavyweights Andy Murray from England and Croatia's Novak Djokovic. And locally, the baby cakes are struggling, but the soccer jesters are undefeated. Coming up next, Dell Demp. Stay tuned right here on Primetime Sports. Have a good one. Welcome back to Primetime Sports. That was quite the open, but this show is going to be even better. Hey, I told you we have John Brady. He's going to talk about the NBA Finals. He was my basketball analyst all through the college basketball season. This is the first time I'm really going to get into some NBA. Hey, basketball is basketball, and wherever you coach it, you know the game. So I can't wait for that. Hey, special guest, middle of the show, I'm going to have Del Demp's son, Riley Demp. That's right. He is a Newman Greeny basketball star. And uh, I've watched him play several times. I'm looking forward to talking to him about, you know, his career. Talk a little bit about his brother, Trey, who was a great player for Northwestern. And, of course, his father as well. But right now is that father. His name is Del Demps. He just completed his seventh year as the general manager of the New Orleans Pelicans. He was on the show right before the season started. And here he is back. The NBA draft's coming up and obviously free agents following that. We're not going to talk specifically about players because that is not what you do if you're trying to have some strategy. But we might talk about some needs and things like that. But we're going to have some fun. Welcome back to the show, my friend. Thanks for having me. How you been? I'm doing great. Doing great. We had fun last time. And I thought, you know what? That was before the season. Let's get it back afterward. Let's talk about this real quick because... Before we get into the Pelicans, you're a fan of the game. You yeah. played the game. The NBA Finals are going on. Do you watch it? And tell me when you do, how do you watch it? Is it a fan or are you watching it as strictly a general manager? Both. All right. Both. Yeah, you know, it's it's fun to watch the Finals. Um, you know, you, you think, like, hey, how can we get there? You know, that, that's the, that's the thing right. that, that stays in your mind. But, and, you know, it's fun to watch it as a fan as well. But when you say, how do you get there, what are you thinking? I, that, you know, for our team, how, how, how do you match up with these guys? How do right? you play them during a the regular season? And then, you know, what if, you know, how, how, you know, and obviously that's the goal. You know, you want to be playing on that big stage. That is the goal. I mean, it's funny. And now for the first time, I think since you've been here, that people are like, oh, my, we now have two guys. It's one to have Anthony Davis, who's a superstar and has been for five years. But now you brought along a guy, and what many say was the biggest blockbuster trade in the NBA in years. You brought Boogie Cousins in. Now you honestly can say, we really can get that goal maybe sooner than we expected before. You know, I, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. You know, we have a lot of work in front of us. Okay. And, um, but we do feel like we have some pieces. We have some, we have some good players, obviously, with um, Anthony and DeMarcus. And, you know, we're hoping to bring Drew back. And um, we're, we're looking forward to the challenges uh, that are in front of us. All right, we're going to get to Drew and all that in a second. But I want to ask you, before I get off the topic, about the NBA Finals. When you watch these teams, and let's take yourself out of it, just kind of be uh, an analyst on this. You got three superstars on both teams, at least four, would, some would say, for the Warriors. I mean, Clay Thompson might be the best fourth, fourth option in NBA history. <laughs> but when you look at these guys, 
what kind of style would you prefer to play? Well, I think you have to play your own style. I don't know if you can beat them playing their style. And so that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to establish our, 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 own, identity, our own identity and try to contrast their, their style because I don't know if you can beat them playing their game. Well, as far as those teams, when you watch Golden State play themselves, I mean, they already had one of the, the, the at least the most fun teams to watch, and obviously it was a thing of beauty. But then you bring in Kevin Durant, and he's just <laughs> co- I mean, listen, I was wondering how he would fit, and at times people are like, ah, oh, they don't seem like the same team. But right now, I don't think anybody's saying that. What does this guy add to this team? Hey, he, he's a phenomenal player. You know, they, they've done a great job assembling that team, and, uh, you know, they set the bar really high. I mean, seriously, this is one of the best teams in NBA history. I remember kind of intimating that their first year before they got, they won that title. And I kept saying, I said, this was before. I mean, this is way early. It was Christmas time. I said, I've watched this team for two months now this season. I said, I'm not going to go crazy on, on saying they're the best team of all time because obviously Jordan's had some great teams, the Celtics. Don't. But honestly, at this point, you're talking about three straight years in the NBA Finals. Uh, many people said that last year they, they should have won. They were up 3-1. to one. Right now they're up 2-0. I mean, would you put them in an echelon with those other teams I mentioned, Celtics, Lakers, obviously the Jordan's Bulls? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's always tough to compare teams from different eras. But, you know, they're, they're definitely, you know, an elite group. And, you know, I'm not saying anything that's rocket science right now. But, you know, they're fun to watch. Um, and, you know, this final is entertainment. It would be interesting to see. You know, happens tonight when uh, they go back to Cle- I mean, go back to Cleveland this week. Um, you know, I think it's going to be fun to watch. You know, and, and I said, I think it's excitement for uh, all NBA fans right now. I got, I, you know, I just thought of this question because I wasn't planning on this because I'm asking it to John Brady later. But Steve Kerr, I mean, John's uh-huh. a coach, so when he comes back, I want to ask him as a coach, hey, what do you think it means for the coach to come back when basically the same system's run? But you're the GM. Mike Brown did a phenomenal job, right? But Steve Kerr's back. What kind of edge does that give that team, if any at all? You know, I don't know if it's, you know, I guess to get back to, you know, familiar, familiarity, um, you know, being familiar, fam- fam- I'm going to let that word go. That's all go. Familiarity. <laughs> familiarity, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to let go. that word go. Uh, that was a tough one. Um, but, uh, no, um, you know, I, I think, you know, that team is, you know, they're playing so well together, and they're, they, they've been playing together for years now. And, you know, when he was away, you know, everyone said he was still very involved, uh, Coach Kerr, um, you know, in the practices and talking with, you know, Mike Brown. And Mike Brown's a phenomenal coach as well. And so I don't know if it gives them an edge, but, you know, it, it gets them back to, you know, things are normal. People forget that Mike Brown had a few 60-win seasons and was yeah. NBA coach of the year. Not a bad coach. Hey, one last thing before we get to the Pelicans. LeBron James, he's been down two games before in the finals. Would it be foolhardy for us to count him out being down 2-0 in the measure that they've gotten beaten. Oh, I think you can just look back to last year and say, hey, you don't want to do that. And so, um, like I said, both teams are, are, are very talented. Both teams are champions. Um, I, I think, you know, when you hear both teams talking their, their post-game comments, you know, that they're, you know, both teams know that the other team can, can steal sure. in the series. Last thing, one thing, and I just thought of this. As an NBA general manager, are you growing up? Do you ever keep your eyes on other sports? And if so, which ones would, do you watch? Um, before I was general manager, I used to watch a lot of football. Uh-huh. Um, I watched a little bit of European soccer. Uh, but lately, you know, I've been so, you know, into the Pelicans and trying to get the busy. team ready. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> right. And so, you know, there's an occasional Sunday I get some games in. I watch some Saints games. But, you know, I used to watch, like, you know, a number of NFL games on Sundays, you know, over the weekend. But now it's pretty much, uh, you know, NBA, Pelicans. And I I watch college basketball as well. You're still a young man. I mean, you look very young. But you were really young when you got the general manager job. Uh, What's it like? I mean, honestly, you kind of talked about this a little bit when you were on the show last time. But, honestly, what's it like being a general manager? Because this is kind of a dream job for every, you know, jock out there that's wanting to do something after they played or whatever. Uh, but you got the guy. There's only 30 of these gigs in America yeah. or in the world. What is this like? You know, it's a dream job. You know, I, sometimes I still pinch myself. You know, I think back, you know, coming back from California and, um, you know, growing up in a small town outside of Oakland in the Bay Area. I, you know, I, I pinch myself sometimes. You got but, to, huh? Yeah, but, but I'm enjoying it. You know, it's so much fun, you know. And, you know, obviously pressure comes with it. But if, if you don't want the pressure, if you don't want to be in the spotlight, you know, this is not the job for you. And so... 
for me, you know, some people say, hey, it's like you're playing fantasy basketball. And it, sometimes it is, but, you know, and, you know, the, you know, the contracts and the money and the trade and the personnel and the coaches and the staff and the fans, you know, I love it. You know, I love NBA basketball. I think, you know, it's, it's a great time for NBA basketball right now. And uh, I love that you said that because I've been a fantasy every sport player for years and years, and I love I love it. I just like the fact that hey, let's build this team, and uh, now everybody does it. But back in the late '80s, nobody mm -hmm. was really doing it. But but a lot of people have said when you put that team together, you had some great players, but maybe the pieces didn't fit. But they but I want I want you to see what what would you say to those folks because. I see every reason why you did every move. I really do. Right. And I'm talking about the main three guys that aren't here, like Eric Gordon, which was part of a trade, mm -hmm. uh, which really wasn't your first option trade because you were trading something with the Lakers and you were going to get Goran Dragic, mm -hmm. and then that happened. But, you know, like an Eric Gordon and a Ryan Anderson and Tyreek Evans. Mm -hmm. So talk about those guys and, and how you sum their careers up and then the whole fantasy foot basketball aspect of it. You know, looking back on it, I don't, think, I don't know if we'll ever know how good that team could have been because those guys had injuries – throughout their, their Record time setting here. amount of injuries, right. And so they never really got a, t a chance to all play together for long stints. Exactly. And so, you know, we, we've moved on and, um, you know, we wish those guys the best. They were all good guys, you know, and they were I guys agree. that came to compete. But, you know, I, I just don't know how good that group would have been. Um, and sometimes I wonder, you know, sometimes I sit back and, you know, I watch them playing now and, you know, um, you know, I, I wish those guys could all have been healthy at the same time. You know, media can be harsh, and that's what they do. This is more of an entertainment show, so that's not my style to do this right <laughs> here. But uh, do you think it's fair, some of the criticism that you've gotten? Because I, I seem like I'm defending you more than I should. Because it's like people, do you not realize they had 350 games missed in one season for injuries to your yeah. key players? It's a lot. But do you ever think about that? Because you, you'd be human not to, in my opinion. You know, it it's, it's, it's part of the business. You know, right. people want to see wins. And, um, you, know, you know, we understand that. And like I said, if, if, if you don't understand that, then, you know, you're in the wrong business. And so, you know, our goal is moving forward. You know, I, obviously, you know, there's time I do look back at it. I would be lying if I didn't say that. But, you know, my, my focus is moving forward. Our focus is moving and getting this team in the best possible position we can. All right, we're going to talk about specific players that you have on your team and maybe your vision for some of the others. But you're... you're you do scouting reports all the time, and you mm. have people work with you. If you were doing a scouting report on your career, or you as a player, <laughs> what would that be? As a player? As a player. No, 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 no. Yeah, as a player. I'm not talking about your GM career. You're, you're analyzing yourself as a player when you played. <laughs> when I played. Huh. You know, I was a gritty guy. Um, you know, I was a hard worker, blue-collar guy. You know, my NBA career wasn't great. You know, I, I was fighting to get on the roster. So, so that's why a lot of times I have a lot of love for the guys that are, you know, coming from the D-League or – undrafted or just trying to make it the hard way because that's how, how I came. Um, you know, when I played, I played, you know, I played pro ball for 10 years, but I was only in the NBA for three. Right. And the majority of my and career. And there's one uh, overseas yeah, right there. Yeah, I, I was in Greece right there. Yep. Uh, Scott Skiles was actually our coach over there, and Paige Sojakovic was a teammate. Talk about gritty. Yeah. And that's so, a gritty player and coach um, right there. You know, I still go over there scouting and looking for players, and, you know, it's, it's great basketball over there. It's fun to watch. Um, the fans there are unbelievable with the passion. And Greece love for is probably team. the best in the world, maybe Spain and Greece. But as you know, yeah. I was an agent overseas a lot, so I got to see it firsthand. It's it's exciting over there. They're passionate. Oh, passionate! I mean, you know when, you know when you you, you see after the games and the fans are in the parking lot or in the arenas and they're doing their chants. Um, you know, you, you get a chill sometimes. You know, I, I went over to the uh, the European um, Championship this year, the European Final Four. And just oh, being in that crazy. building, it's, it's, crazy. it's unbelievable. It's an unbelievable experience. All right, well, I'm going to say this. You, your son is going to be a guest coming up. Uh, how, what would your scouting report be on this guy? <laughs> I happened to see his first game. I'm bringing this up. The first game I saw him play was a couple years ago, and the guy hit like 10 threes against Della South. I'm like, what? And they said, well, he doesn't do that every game, but still, yeah. what's, what's his game? He thinks he does that every game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're a shooter, you yeah. better. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think, you know, the, the first thing is that, you know, he's a leader. You know, I think that winning is the most important thing to him, and that's that's fun to watch. I think he plays the game the right way. Uh, you know, he likes to score. You know, but he also, I think he's a unselfish scorer. I think you know he'll he'll make the right basketball play. And he's overcome, born with brachial plexus. Explain that and and what it's taken to overcome that. You know, basically he has a, a shoulder injury and arm injury that uh, he was born with, and he's had a couple a, a number of procedures um, that he's done over over the years, but. 
to his credit, you know, and I think this is probably the thing I'm probably most proud about is that he never makes any excuses. He comes out and plays. You know, he never, um, you know, he, he accepts what's happened. And, you know, as I, I feel like he, he learned to uh, use it as an advantage. Well, I'm going to tell you this. You don't even know it unless you're paying attention to mm. it because he can, he can cross anybody over. I'm like, wow, it's impressive. All right, let's talk about this team right now. Uh, you boogie, you get, what's the vision right now? And what would be the best case scenario? And I'm not talking about NBA finals this year, yeah. but I'm talking about best case scenario for what you envision putting around boogie and AD for this upcoming season. Drew. <laughs> Drew Holiday. No, that's what I want to no, hear. No. Is this uh, the best case scenario? No, no, no. Um, seriously, you know, the one thing about DeMarcus is he's a very, you know, people, you know, see his passion and competitiveness on the court. I think what they don't see is this, he's a really caring person. Yeah. And he's also a very smart player. Um, you know, we've had some great text exchanges. Uh, you know, he, 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 he's committed to the group, you know, and he's working out right now. Um, you know, he, he's consistently asking questions. You know, he wants to be a part of it. He's in, you know what I mean? And, that, and that's, that's, that makes you feel good because, you know, whenever you make a trade and, you know, trades are hard. I think sometimes, you know, people forget that, you know, you have to uproot your family. And there's you have a to human come, element. There's a human it. element, yeah, right. to it. Like, you know, you're right. coming and things change and, you know, you're going to a new group and it's almost like a new family. And, you know, does, does a new family like you? And, you know, getting adjusted and, you know, a player of his skills, there's an adjustment period where not only for – the new player, but also for the teammates, because you know when you make the, the, the trade, you're really changing the way you play yeah. because of a guy right. that is that good. And you know we just feel like that. You know when we first made the trade, you know we started off two and six, and you know we knew it was going to be an adjustment period, and we hoped that we could make that adjustment period a little quicker. Um, well, it's when you realize this isn't fantasy basketball. Yeah. You have to have them play together. Right. I kept trying to tell people in the media, it's like, did you really expect this to be an 8 no star? Did you? Yeah. Because you saw the 8-3 and three run, right? Yeah. And then that was more your vision, what you thought might, could happen. Exactly. And, and the thing that is tough is, like you said, when you, you bring in a new player and he's as good as, you know, DeMarcus is a very good player. And so we had to change the way we play. So, like, you know, you had to take out a bunch of plays that you've been running the majority of the season and put yeah. in new plays because you want to maximize his talent. You know, sometimes you make trades and a player comes in and his style of play fits the style of play that you've already been playing. But here, we, we, we've gone in a different direction. And, uh, but, but, but we're happy about that. You know, we're, 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 we're thrilled. And, you know, I'm just so happy that, you know, he's committed. You know, you shocked the world with the trade, right? And mm -hmm. I, I know you can't talk about what went down with the Paul George possibility because I kept hearing for two days, Paul George... Uh, DeMarcus Cousin. I'm like, what? I was like, this is crazy. I said, in a good way. But it, it kind of came down, all of a sudden you see DeMarcus in his interview at the All-Star game, and somebody whispers in his ear that either he's about to be traded, or it could be traded, or he was just traded, and he smiled just like that. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> wait, me and AD? Can you tell us how that went down? Because I think it's an interesting story. Well, you know, obviously there, there, there are a lot of talks, and, you know, we're going back and forth, and, um, you know, working with Sacramento and, you know, Vladi, Divac, and um, Ken Catella, uh, you know, it, it, you know, it happened, you know, it happened over, you know, a series of days and talks and conversations. But, you know, I think that for, for each team, you know, I think it's going to work. You know, I think, you know, they're, they're going in a different direction. We're going in a different direction. And, uh, you know, I'm thrilled. I, 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 I you have to be, right? I, I, I'm very excited about the, 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 the possibilities and opportunities. But the agent in me has got to ask you a question because if <laughs> I'm his agent, obviously you want to see how things are going to go. But if you're management, I would imagine, particularly if you're a fan, you want to see this guy be committed and sign long term. But if I'm his agent, i got to be honest with you, I'm probably saying, hey, unless you're 100% sure you're comfortable with the situation, play the year out. Take the gamble. You're going to get the money either way. So, and you then you're going to have an option of to choose where you want to play. So, what? How do you answer that? And what's going to happen? Well, our, our, <laughs> our feeling is, you know, we hope that he likes being here. You know, he hope that, that he enjoys it. You know, most of the comments. You know, I don't like to speak for players, but sure. most of his comments is that he, you know, he he enjoys it. You know, I talked to him, you know, a number of times. You know, since he, you know, we acquired him and in the off season, and you know, you feel his commitment. 
You did mention Drew Holiday, and you smile when you said it, right? Because he is a tremendous human being. Yeah. I mean, I have not been around him really a whole lot except locker rooms and, and maybe media day preseason interviews, and I've done a lot of those with him. He just seems super genuine, right? Uh, you guys have had his back, and it's been admirable. I mean, you know, there's some teams that say, hey, you have a contract, but when his wife was going through her brain tumor – uh, and she was pregnant at the same time. You said take as much time off. And he and listen, there's been no secret. He's had a lot of injuries as well, right? Um, is there any equity in that for, for you think with him? I mean, I know it's a business, but what do you think about this situation? How do you think it's going to turn out? You know, first I want to say is that obviously the holidays are great people, and um, we we love having you know Lauren and, and Drew in uh, in our organization. You know, they're a big part of our organization, and you know. I'm going to take the lead from, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Benson. Um, you know, we're good people. You know, we're going to do the right thing. Yeah. And um, the situation at the holidays we're going through is way more important than basketball. You know, basketball is, a you know, a small... Well, let's be honest. Back. In the end of the day, what's really important to you exactly. in your life? I mean, that's it. I mean, this yeah. is life, right? Yeah. And this so, is a game. You know, you don't, you don't do anything... For anything in return you do think because you know you, we're good people we're a good organization and health is the most important thing i love you said mr benson because he has been around this city for a, I mean, he's born here obviously but in the sports realm for 30 plus years um recently with the pelicans obviously with the saints since the mid 80s but what is i think i think i think an interesting question for people would be there's an interesting dynamic here you have the bensons you have Mickey Loomis, you have yourself, you have Alvin Gentry, and some people hear Danny Ferry's name. What is the dynamic in this office? I mean, <laughs> I mean, is that something we could talk about? Because I think it's interesting for people to know. Oh, it's, it's, it's great. You know, I think, um, you know, obviously it starts with the Bensons. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, it's fun seeing, you know, talking to him, feeling his passion, you know, uh, his commitment. You know, he's giving us everything we need to be successful. Um, working with uh, Mickey's been great. You know, I think, you know, we get to share ideas. Um, you know, I, I, I can't thank him enough. You know, he's been unbelievable, not only as um, a colleague, but also as a friend. Um, I, 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 you know, I've learned so much from him. And so I, 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 I said, I, I feel lucky. You know, a lot of times I wake up in the morning, and I, I told you, I still pinch myself because I yeah. feel like I'm in a great situation. Alvin's one of the best people you, you'll, you'll ever meet. You know, working with him has been fun. Um, you know, he just has this charm. Like, it's, it's amazing just, just to, to, to watch him um, just meet people for the first time and you feel like you, you see a connection with them. Like, he's known people for, like, 30 years, the way he can just connect with people. So what week is he going to be on this show? <laughs> <laughs> Throw a good word in for me. All right? I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, by the way, last year, you know, you, you, you got Langston Galloway, you know, Etuan Moore, and free agency, and, of course, Solomon Hill. Um, and then you drafted Buddy Heald. And to get players, you must give players. Right. And you gave half those guys away, plus a draft pick. And, I, and, and most everybody's like, the Pelicans won. I, like you, I think both teams won with the direction they're going, right? Mm -hmm. But this year, you cannot talk about free agents, and I understand that. And for you out there, obviously for a number of reasons, you can't talk about players. But I can talk about maybe vision you might have on what you might go for. Uh, shooters are obviously something. You know, there's no heel, There's no Galloway. People would think, oh, man, maybe we need a shooter for spacing. And other people would say, hey, we need some penetrating patient. I know there's Tim Frazier out there, but maybe there's not. What kind of player, what kind of player, what kind of uh, attributes are you maybe looking for? Because I think that's not giving it away. Good basketball players. Oh, that's <laughs> easy. Come on, give me more than that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, you, know, I, you know, one thing I learned, and this is, you know, all these shows that you go on, you don't want to tip your, you know, tip, tip your hand. You don't want to give people. You're not they, looking for a center, I imagine. Uh, or you know, powerful. Yeah, you know, sometimes Maybe, I, I keep, Scott. I sometimes like to keep things close to the best, but you know, it's obvious like, you know, shooting is going to be important for us, but also you want to get good basketball players that can make plays. I think just the way the game is going. I don't right know why now. they put the JJ Redick picture up there. I have you know, no idea. He didn't say that. <laughs> for everybody watching, he did not say that. My hey, by the way, you have an interesting big man that you drafted in the second round of last year. Who I think would have been a first rounder had he played more check check the yellow. Uh, you can talk about him. Right. What is this guy? What do you, what's your vision for him in the future? You know, first of all, he's an unbelievable human being. You know, he walks in every day with a smile on his face. Uh, you know, he's really down to earth. You know, as a uh, you know, he he he's he's almost like a throwback type of player. You know, he, he comes to practice every day in an Uber. 
And, oh, uh, nice. Yeah. Nice. And so, uh, Uber. yeah. And, uh, well, that's you know, his age, baby. That's, they all got Uber. <laughs> and, you know, he just works extremely hard. You know, he's an energy big. Um, you know, we're hoping that within today's NBA game, he can be a rim runner, a shot blocker, um, rebounder. But then he can also score. He just finds a way to put the ball in the basket. You know, he's a very good shooter. You know, 16, 17 feet. We're going to, we're going to, Keep working with him to extend his range, but he finds a way to score. He, you know, he, he's our, you know, he's he's one of our our, our projects. You know, we're we're we're, we're developing him, and uh, we're hoping that he can be a contributor. Last thing, uh, Quincy Pondux has been out for two years. People don't realize the leadership this guy has, the three and D player that he was when he was healthy. A big part of that playoff run, uh, right? Big part of it. Big part. Forty-five and thirty-seven team. Uh, who, by the way, they got swept by Golden State, but they played very competitive basketball in that series. People forget that part. But he means a lot to this team. Is Tell me what the future might hold for him, or do we, is it still uncertain? It's a little uncertain right now. Um, obviously, you know, he hadn't played since the playoffs. Uh, you know, he, he's had some setbacks in um, – he had, he's had a couple surgeries. And then, playoffs of 2015, we yeah. should say, right. And, you know, it's, it's, it's tough because, you know, He's one of those glue type guys. You know, he's a leader, not only in the locker room, but on the floor. You know, we've missed his defense and his, you know, his shooting. You know, he, 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 he was a big part for us. He was, he was an important pickup we made that year when we made the run for the playoffs. And, you know, we were hoping to, uh, you know, have his services the last two years. Um, he's going through some testing right now. He's actually going to be in, t- be in town this week. And we're hoping to get him back on the floor. Dell, we all wish you nothing but the best of luck, man. Uh, Thanks I can't for having thank you me. enough. I really can't. And, I know that you are an uptowner. I'm not going to give you address away, but you're not too <laughs> far away from Shays Della Shays. Yeah, I ride my bike by there. And, that's right, uh, you're a bike rider. Yeah, I bike I've seen eat. you on your bike. You I have. Salute, yo, did I you have. almost hit me one time? I, that, I thought I did. <laughs> did I not nick you? All right, Dell Demps, by the way, we're going to have his son coming up. We have a tradition. He signed the Saints ball because he's part of the organization, but because of Carl Malone, I got a basketball now. I tried to get one with the whites to make it easier to sign, but give me your John Hancock. Anywhere up in there by the NBA sign. All right. And enjoy your thing. I can't wait to have your son. I'm not sure if you're going to be on the set or not, but regardless, Riley Demps is coming up. And don't forget, we're going to talk NBA Finals with John Brady coming up right after that. So it's going to be fun. We'll be right back right here on Primetime Sports. Rock and roll will never die. It's old New Orleans by oh my. Come on, baby, let's go rock and roll at the city lane. All night, let's roll, let's rock and roll. Baby, do the rock and roll at the city lane, the home of rock and roll. The owners of the Delachaise Wine Bar on St. Charles Avenue have opened up their newest creation uptown on Maple Street called Shea Delachaise a new local wine bistro featuring a larger menu of small and large plates, a brighter atmosphere, and full table service. Additionally, patrons can enjoy a large patio out front as well as an extensive wine list offering selections from around the world. It's Chez Delachaise, 7708 Maple Street between Carrollton and Broadway. Crescent City Steakhouse, a true neighborhood restaurant operated by the Boykovich family since 1934 is the oldest steakhouse in the city of New Orleans. Serving only hand-cut, prime-age, corn-fed beef for over 80 years, Crescent City Steakhouse has become a dining destination for both die-hard locals and adventurous travelers who seek traditional, timeless New Orleans cuisine. Crescent City Steakhouse, 1001 North Broad, on the corner of St. Philip, in the heart of New Orleans. Welcome back to Primetime Sports. Hey, don't forget, we're going to talk NBA Finals coming up next with John Brady. And we just finished talking with General Manager Del Demps. Well, we have another member of the Demps family. He plays for the Newman Greeny basketball team. Hey, sometimes I have some high school players. They didn't very often, but we've had a few uh, over the last year. But right now, uh, you know, the life of an NBA coach or general manager can't be easy. You know, it's tenuous wherever you are. uh, And you never know where you're going to be in a couple years. But thank goodness that Riley Demps has been able to be here throughout his entire junior high and, and high school career at Newman. And here he is. Welcome to the show for hey, the first time. How's it going? How's it going? Good to see you, brother. Good, good by the way, you. since we're going to talk, I did a scouting report. Your dad's a general manager, and obviously you love basketball and you have basketball IQ. Uh, you ever seen your dad play? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll see him. Play, I'll see him play like and pick up, pick up and stuff. Nothing live. But like, never I'll seen the NBA no. action. None well, of I've that? seen like little like tapes and stuff. And right. Apparently, he was in the NBA at some point. Like, but still, know. would you? What would your scouting report of your father be? You know, now, so we've gotten to, so now we've, we've been playing pickup. Can you beat him yet? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. really? Well, yeah. he'll say, he'll probably say something different, but we play one on one. We play one on one from time to time, and you know, you know, it's going to be a good game when uh, the workout's been going on for 30 minutes, and he's like, all right, check up, check up. I'm like, oh, yeah, now we're about to go. You're bringing me memories because yeah. it just happened. It's a big traumatic moment. It's a big moment when you finally can beat your dad or your big brother. For me, uh, it was big for me when I beat my big brother, but for my son, uh, he was dunking and all. He's like, uh, yeah, that came when he was like 17. It, it, it was like it was over. Yeah. But now, if it, if Dell's anything like me, he'll say, but I'll still take you a yeah. horse anytime. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> but he, this is the thing. My dad, he always goes to the uh, career record. He's like, because okay. you know, he started beating me when I was oh, yeah, when yeah, I was seven. Career. Seven. He's probably he's probably up me up up on me. That's the only bullets games. we got yeah. left in the chamber. We're going to talk career. I beat you when you were five years old. <laughs> yeah. I beat you bad. Don't forget. Right. Hey, right. Uh, now what about yourself? Hey, what would your scouting report on yourself as a player be if, if you were maybe scouting you for another team? You know, I'm, my thing is I'm, I'm a playmaker. I want, to be, I want to be able to make plays on all parts of the court. And I'm trying to score, I'm trying to score and make my teammates better at all times. And so I just want to help win games. And on any team I'm on. Well, the first time, I've seen you play a good bit, but the first time was about two years, I think you were a sophomore, um, and you played at De La Salle, yeah. and dude, I, I was like, I heard you were a good shooter, but <laughs> I was like, this guy just hit like 10 threes in this game, and I, if you saw the interview just now, yeah. I said that had to be one of his best games, and your dad said, well, if you ask him, that's going to, he's like that every game, yeah, <laughs> but, but you were on fire <laughs> that game, that right? was, No, that was, that was, I think that, that was De La Salle, so at, I think I was, at their gym. yeah, yeah, that was one of my, that was my first like really like good game, that's what everybody was, that's you were unconscious, by the way, yeah, <laughs> thanks, just, thank you, appreciate it, yeah. I mean, I I hate the Dell South beat you by 20 still, but <laughs> hey. you know, it was still a great game. Hey, uh, talk about you were born brachial plexus. Uh, tell people what that is for those that don't know and, and what you've done to overcome it. Um, so brachial plexus is it's a it's a birth injury, not really a birth defect. It happens like a lot of times when um, babies can't get in birthing position correctly. Right. Okay. correctly. Okay. And so, like when they were when they pull you out, like it busted. I busted a nerve, and so it just it just your shoulder just trying to protect itself. It bends up and tries to protect itself. But I've had like great procedures that have made it to where I feel like I, it's an almost an advantage now. Your head coach happens to be a guy I know well. Um, he said if I did not say uh, that he was the best coach in America, he would give me a hard time. But there he is, Jim Tillett. Coach the De La Salle, a legendary 41 team, state champion, went on to Samford for many years as a head coach in college, and now he's back in the Crescent City for the last few years coaching you at Newman. Uh, what can you say about Jim Tillett? Well, you know, I think he, he's the best coach I've ever played for. You already far. got playing yeah. time. Yeah. You don't need this. Is, this no, I don't know. I don't know. This is, you'll be hard-pressed to find somebody that's more committed and more educated in the game, and he is so deliberate and how he teaches, and he's always thinking of new ways to help his players be successful. He's going to love that we put a yeah. picture of him from 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah, I'm sure he'll love that. I'm sure he'll love that with the glasses. <laughs> yeah, that looks good. The That's glass, perfect. The glasses Although perfect, he is yeah. one of the younger-looking guys for his age. I won't tell right. you age, Jim, right. but for his he's age. He's still pretty quick. He's still pretty quick. No, he's, he's got move. game. Yeah. No, I used to guard him when I was in high school. We'd play pickup, and he's like 15, 20 years older than me. And uh, uh, did I say that? Five years. I'm sorry, Dan. <laughs> but that dude was quick, and he got the ball up the court in a hurry. Right, yeah, uh, but yeah. talk about your Newman experience since you've been here. I mean, listen, a lot of great players over the years. I mean, obviously, football, Odell Beckham Jr., we right. all know about him. We know about the Manning guys. But basketball has a great tradition. Sean Tui is, was a legend. Gerald Williams, guys like that. Randy Livingston was the number one player coming out. So this is no stranger to great basketball. Yeah. Most recently, Duke Douglas and guys like that. But what's the experience been like for you? You know, the basketball program has been great. You know, it's very well run. It's very well run, and there's a big tradition of sports in Newman. And the whole, the whole team, the whole school really just rallies around their sports. And I've been blessed to get the love that so many people before me have had. Yeah, you do get a lot of love, and and, and it's yeah. deservingly so. The Elite 100, you just saw that up there. Kind yeah. of explain what that is, and, and what's it mean for you to be a part of that. Um, I went to, to that Elite 100 that was up there. That was one in L.A., and that was a live tournament. That was a live tournament out there. 
And I played out there, and it was a really good tournament. Had a, I mean, a really good camp, and they had a lot of uh, college college coaches there, and it was cool. It was a cool experience. Like I went there with a couple of my teammates. It was great. It must really. I was gonna say another word, but it must really stink uh, for you to have to be a general manager's son. You get that? You have to hang around these NBA players all day. It's just oh, terrible. Man, huh? Terrible, man. It's the <laughs> worst. What's, it's what's the, that like? No, it's it, no, it's a, it's amazing because you're. I'm around so much good basketball at so at all. It's all around me, and so I think I, I think it really helps to be able to be around all these great basketball players. Do you players. get to play with them? Do you have a relationship with these guys? Uh, my, probably the guy that I play with the best play with is Czech Diallo. Like, we, we've, we, we used to play at Tulane together this sum, like last summer, and, um, yeah, we're, like, we're cool. Like, he'll probably text me after this or something. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. honestly, I love him. By the way, yeah, I can't. That's my guy. That's, my that's guy. your guy? Yeah. Once again, I use your dad to get Gentry. If you can get Czech Diallo on the show, we will talk. All right? right. Uh, but, hey, talk about it. It's got, there's some excitement in the air about this Pelicans team. When you put a Boogie Cousins and an Anthony Davis together, you're talking about two of the elite players in the NBA. Right. Hey, you're a fan. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. What do you think about this? I mean, I, tell me what you I, think. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping for the best. I'm hoping for the best. I hope, I hope we can uh, get it all, get it all looking good because it's, look, it's looking good right now. So we'll see how that works out. Well, okay, you. You're a GM now, right? Let's just assume this is going to be your career. I don't know what you want, but you might want to be a doctor. But when you put this team together, uh, what would you put around these two centerpieces? You know, I think I think I think we're I think we're on the right track, and I think we have like a good. I think we have a good. Uh, well, I don't mean. I know your dad said don't talk about players. I'm talking about would you put some shooters up in there? Or you put some rebound, or I mean, or some uh, ball handlers? Good or what? basketball players. There you go. He <laughs> good, is good basketball players. Off the old block. <laughs> I got it. Uh, Newman, la this season, last question. Uh, what are your expectations uh, coming into the season? You got the greatest coach in America, obviously. That's right. two plugs for you, Jimmy. Right. Uh, what do you expect? Uh, you know, we have a good mix of older and younger guys coming into the program this year, and I think we have a chance to be a really good team at Uptown. Uh, last thing, your brother was probably at this point a little harder to beat than maybe your father. Trey <laughs> was a great player, over a thousand points at Northwestern, who, by the way, got in the tournament for the first year. Right. Uh, year. Is it any coincidence the year? Uh, after he left? Uh, I don't know. I'm kidding, Trey. But what was it like growing up with a brother that was a darn good basketball no, player? I mean, it's cool because it's, it's a good limit stick always around the house. In fact, we just, got, we just got back from the gym this morning. He came in town this week. Came in town this weekend. And so, yeah. He's playing overseas? Yeah, he's playing in, he's playing in Belgium. He played in Belgium last year, and then we'll see where he plays this upcoming year. Well, here's a gift certificate for you. I wasn't going to do it, but there's no NCAA violations here. You're <laughs> for young. Sure, for sure. You know, it'll get you a starter. <laughs> for sure. You could eat by yourself, but if you have a date, you might want to bring out looks of cash with that. And, hey, well, you know what, Riley? We're going to put you on the ball here, oh, too. Yeah, I'm going to sign it up. Yeah, yeah, we're going to sign the ball. It's a tradition. Cool, cool. So just anywhere in there. Riley Dimps. That's right. Not just Dell. We had his son, Riley. And, by the way, you got to watch this kid play. If you have any chance, get to a Newman game this year. They are a lot of fun. Hey, check that Newman basketball tournament. That's a lot of fun. They always have great competition in that one. Hey, coming back, I have John Brady, former Final Four coach for the LSU Tigers. Coach Big Baby, Coach Cyrus Thomas, Brandon Bass, Strowell Swift, and a bunch of other greats. He's coming up right here to talk NBA Finals on Primetown Sports. Muscle show on a on a dirty dog bus. Won't need to tell nuts here. Know what happened to us? Dreaming about a Cadillac. It's pimping green with leather seats. Something that's gonna tear up the round. Rule these broken streets. I'm riding high. Ah, uh, welcome back to Primetime Sports. Who says you can't go back home again? Yeah, for two and a half months, John Brady was right here doing, he was our basketball analyst. Well, he, he took two months off, and now he's back. He's back. We're going to talk NBA Finals with the former Final Four coach. I'm looking forward to that right now. I want to thank, once again, Del Demps and his son, Riley. That was a lot of fun, but we're going to stick on the basketball team. John How doing, Brady. Man? How you been? Welcome back, my friend. 
Well, it's good to see you again. It is good to see you. You look rested. <laughs> you look tan. Hey, real quick, I'm kind of. You're kind of tan. Uh, I got to ask you. You've had many players play in the NBA from the greats like Stromall Swift. Uh, Glenn Big Baby Davis has a ring. You've had several others. You still have three guys, even though you haven't been in, at LSU in a decade. Three guys still in the league. Brandon Bass, 12 years in the league. Obviously, Marcus Thornton still playing in the league. And we also have another good player right there. Garrett Temple. Garrett Temple, who I thought favorites. was going to be on this show today. Garrett Temple was going to get him. There. We're going to get him. We're going to get him on We're the show. But Big Baby got a ring right out the bat. I mean, that was right. beautiful. But I have to ask you, you coached in college for so long, and you've been watching the NBA playoffs and, and particularly right. the finals. What is the main difference of being a college basketball head coach and an NBA head coach? Well, you know, from my observation, you know, I, th I think – a lot of times a college game is a coach's game. They say the NBA is a player's game, which I think a lot of times in the NBA it is a player's game, and the game kind of rocks along. But I, I'm going to tell you what I think separates really good NBA coaches from average NBA coaches is the last three minutes of the half, the first three minutes of the second half, the last three or four or five minutes of a game. When they have to come out of a timeout, what do they run, plays that they run, uh, special situations, I think that's what really separates the really good NBA coaches. Because when the basket is made and you call timeout, you're able to play the ball on your half-court side out and your half-court side. So I think anything an NBA coach can do from coming out of timeouts to special situations separates the great ones from the pretty good ones. Pretty interesting that both of these coaches, Tyron, Tyron Lue for Cleveland, Steve Kerr, for Golden State, both won NBA championships in their very first year ever coaching in the association, as they say. That's rare. They also had a little talent. <laughs> well, I think it goes back to players a lot of times. That's right. why the NBA is a player's right. game. But I, th I think managing players and doing all of the things the NBA has to deal with in terms of personalities, salaries, egos, a coach that can manage that and then also be able to put together some special situation coming out of timeouts, those type of things, I think that separates the good ones from the average. And it's interesting to say it because it's almost like you expect, this particularly the good teams, for them to score out of almost every timeout. But the other team knows you're running a play, and there's only a certain number of things you can do, so creativity is important. I think, I think staying fresh, throwing something new. I think NBA players have a high uh, IQ of playing the game, and I think sometimes in the NBA you can draw up a situation a sideline out of bounds or an underneath out of bounds where the NBA player can take it from the timeout off the chalkboard right into the game. I think sometimes the college players aren't that advanced in terms of their IQ of the game and understanding of the game. But I think in the NBA, you can come off the cuff with some things and they can carry it right into the game and execute something new and that I, the other team hadn't seen. And I have to tell you, nine out of ten times almost when you're coming off of a timeout and you get to set up half court like you say, nine out of ten times the good coaches will score. It's uncanny. I mean, uh, you, you check it out sometimes because we used to gauge this when I was uh, doing stuff with Sager. When you got a good coach, he's going to figure something because he's going to get a wrinkle what that defense isn't doing. He's going to do well, something. Well, I, I love watching it, and I love seeing what they're doing, nuances that they do, new things that they come up with. And I think three or four of those NBA coaches are pretty creative. I love the guy from Boston. I like these two guys that are in the finals, obviously. Uh, and I was talking to Dale Demps, and he, he really likes his guy, but he also likes – Quinn, Quinn Snyder, Snyder and the yes. things that he does. So Quinn Snyder, it's an interesting concept there. Beautiful basketball. Utah is playing all season long, and you mentioned Brad Stevens with Boston. Phenomenal. But there's several good coaches out there. Hey, I have to ask you now, NBA Finals. Uh, mm -hmm. Last year, we saw a unique thing. It was 3-1. to one. For the first time in NBA history, a Finals mm -hmm. team came back from 3-1, to one, which is ironic because Golden State themselves were down 3-1 in the semifinals, which would be the Western Conference uh, championship against the uh, Oklahoma City. They came back and beat them, and basically it happened to them with last year Cleveland. They came back from 3-1, first time ever. They're down 2-0 right now. That is the Cavs, the defending right. champions. Can they come back from a three, I mean, two-game deficit to have a chance to win? And do it again? Obviously, they have an opportunity because they have two games coming up at home. Right. But I think the biggest difference in, in the Golden State team this year and a year ago is they had a 73-win team, yeah. and they add a guy like Kevin Durant. Oh, is he good? He's, I, I, I sent out a tweet the other day as we talked about uh, watching the second game. I said, is the king 
Could he be the third best player on the floor? Well, okay. certainly I got attacked. I bet you got some response. I, I got attacked after that. The king know. would be LeBron James. <laughs> yeah, uh, the king LeBron behind maybe Curry and Kevin Durant. Well, there's no doubt on those nights he was the third best. I mean, well, let's be real. On I, those particular nights. I'm just saying for conversation. Right. Yeah. And it did create some conversation. Yeah. But still, I think the biggest thing Cleveland has to overcome is the ability to, to, to win the three-point battle uh, and, and particularly win the field goal battle. They haven't done that yet. You know, either both teams have turned it over, both teams have rebounded pretty well, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day, the three-point line for Golden State has been a killer, a crusher. So unless Cleveland defends better, keeps the score to 110 or below, I think they're going to have trouble keeping up with Golden State from an offensive standpoint. Oh, I can't. My mind was just wandering about the keyboard warriors on Twitter. Uh, and they, <laughs> I'm sure some of them say, well, Brady, no wonder you're not coaching right. again. You don't know anything <laughs> some about guy, basketball. Some guy said, yeah. Brady, that's the silliest statement yeah. I've, ever, I've ever read. <laughs> he might be partly right. Uh, <laughs> but let me go ahead and talk about why is Golden State – so good besides the great amount of talent. Hey, listen, the 2004 uh, Los Angeles Lakers added Carl Malone and Gary Payton to an already incredible group of Shaq and Kobe, and they right. didn't get it done against the Pistons. Why is this team able to be so amazingly fluid together? Well, they have so many weapons. You know, most teams, you go transition defense. I thought both of these teams last game, they weren't very good in transition defense. You know, LeBron just bullied them down the floor sometimes and laid it in. They didn't stop the ball. What makes Golden State so difficult to defend in transition is four different guys can bring the ball up the floor. So you really don't know who to stop. And if you recall, because their three-point shooters are so prolific on the wings, sometimes Golden State just took it down the floor and as opposed to stopping the ball, which you must do in transition, they were covering the wings. Golden State took it to the rim and just dunked the ball in the basket. So I think they have so many weapons that can bring the ball up the floor, advance the ball up quickly, and the shooters they have are just incredible. I don't know if I've ever seen a team, college, NBA, or wherever, that have four guys that can make baskets. Mark like this Jackson, team. when he coached this team, he said that Steph Curry and Klay Thompson are the best shooting combination in NBA history. People scoffed at him. And even me down here, we said, well, for a year, they had Pistol Pete and Gail Goodrich down here. That was pretty good. <laughs> but right. immediately, I, I, I agree with him when I was doing ESPN Radio. I said, you know what? He may be right, and now no one doubts it. I mean, honestly, is Clay Thompson the best fourth option in the history of the game? Well, I mean, he's the fourth option on this team. Well, he's unbelievable. And they talked about him not scoring baskets in the first game. Well, he didn't get but seven or eight shots. The other night, he had 14 shots. He gets 20-plus points. You give him shots, he's going to make baskets. But... And the thing that really is good about Golden State to me is they seem to fit together. Durant sits on the bench, doesn't seem to bother him. Curry sits on the bench, doesn't seem to bother him. Klay Thompson's not shooting the ball, not getting touches. He doesn't seem to complain about it, but when it's his opportunity, he does make big plays for him. And I think that's what makes them unique, and I think that's what makes them difficult to defend. So Cleveland's going to have a difficult time. The next two games are very important for them at home. Golden State has to, I mean, Cleveland would have to win four out of five to win the series. It's going to be hard. Can You're picking tough. them. I got to thank you, Coach. Yes, sir. You're the best. Since you already <laughs> have so many gifts, tips, gifts, shades, Della Shades, you have stock in the company. You don't need another one. Uh, but thank you anyway for playing. I'll give the restaurant a break. Hey, uh, there's a lot of thanks out here. This has been an in amazing show today. We've had to go through some technical difficulties, and the people back there, uh, did it done. Got it done. Will, Will Hill, my producer, really made it happen. Jay Smoove and Kenny Juno, two of the best in the business. That's Josh Smith and Kenny Juno. i got to thank them so much. I want to thank the Redhead Tsunami, but, but I also want to thank you and all the prayers you've given my brother, who was in a horrific accident last week, broken half of his body bones, and, and literally thousands of you. I'm not even I'm joking. Thousands of you have been praying for him. Thank you so much. Hey, we got a great show. Coach O's coming up. It may, I think it's going to be next week. If it's not, it's this month. We're going to have a big, big month of June for you. Stay tuned for the weeks come. All right here on Primetime Sports. Thank you so much.